Hey everyone, Reese here and welcome to my second channel, Reese Rambles. Uh, shall I say uh, welcome back to my second channel? Um, yeah, so uh, this is the second channel of Control Alt Reese. It's where I put my uh, uh, kind of more unscripted uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff. Uh, you can probably hear from my voice in this video and it's probably going to deteriorate a bit uh, as we go along. Uh, I'm kind of suffering from the, uh, the the dreaded man flu at the moment. I'm also very hot and very sweaty. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, get this over and done with as quickly as we can. But um, yeah, that probably means that I'm not going to be able to put together a main channel video over on Control Alt Reese this week. Um, I don't like to rush these things anyway and just release stuff for the sake of it. Uh, so I'll, I'll just I'll just skip a week and um, put something together for next week. It may well be this uh, if it does all come together in time. So what you can uh, probably see on the desk behind me here is something a little bit different to my usual computers and uh, old games uh, and that kind of stuff that I tend to cover on Control Alt Reese. And this is a Danset record player from the 1960s. Uh, it's a Danset Tempo. Um, I believe it dates from around 1962, 1963. Uh, it's entirely British made. Uh, all of the parts inside it also say uh, made in Great Britain on them or made in England. Um, you know, the valves, the capacitors, the, the record deck assembly and everything. Uh, so it's kind of a, it's a product of a bygone era. And it's, it's something that I really wanted to save and uh, yeah, like I say, it's it's not the kind of stuff that I usually cover on my channel, so it should be quite interesting to get my teeth into it and kind of work out how it all works. And I think the best way to find out how these things work is to take them apart and put them back together again, as I'm sure you'll agree. So I bought this back in May, and I've spent the time since then uh, kind of acquiring parts uh, to fix it up and, and get it working again. So at the moment, uh, you put a record on it, and you uh, obviously put the... Uh, the needle on the record and you can hear it kind of very faintly very tinnily kind of playing um, but that's not coming through to the speaker now I've wired the internal amplifier up um, amplifier amplifier up separately uh, to a, a separate phono input and that's all working fine the speakers are working fine so I believe that the issue with this is with this cartridge uh, this is the original uh, I need to get these the right way around this is the original crystal cartridge uh, like I said, I don't know a huge amount about uh, about this record player stuff, but I am learning. And uh, yeah, so what happens is the, the stylus sits on the groove on the record and it vibrates and that vibrates um, a, a, a crystal inside, which generates a voltage, which is then fed through to the amplifier and then out to the speaker. Uh, and that's the basic principle that uh, record players have operated on, um, you know, since they went since they went electric, since the uh, kind of the post gramophone days, I guess. And the trouble with these is uh, they basically rely on a, a, a kind of block of rubber inside, as is my understanding, and the uh, the rubber perishes over time and then it just sort of all seizes up internally and stops working. And they haven't made these crystal cartridges for uh, 30 plus years. Uh, there, are still, there are some websites out there selling new old stock of these, uh, but they're obviously they've all been you know, they're all getting to the point where they're perishing now and they don't last very long. And to be honest, they weren't brilliant in their day anyway. So what I'm looking at doing is upgrading this Danset to a modern uh, ceramic cartridge. So it basically works on exactly the same principle, but the, the internals are slightly different and it uses a, uh, a ceramic assembly rather than a crystal based assembly to turn that vibration into a voltage. Now, the thing is, there are some quite fundamental differences between how these two things work. Um, so there's got to be some changes made to it uh, and I was when I started researching this back in May I was looking at a website called backfromthe60s.co.uk uh, which someone had done an actual conversion to a modern uh, ceramic is the modern one isn't it to a modern ceramic cartridge um, and it showed the whole preamp design and everything else that he'd, that he'd done on that and that website seems to have vanished um, it's on archive.org on the Wayback Machine, uh, but all of the images have disappeared and the images are where the wiring diagrams and stuff were and I didn't make a note of any of it so I kind of went out and bought all of the bits to copy that and uh, now I've lost the information so I've had to go back and kind of re-research all of that and go through forums and stuff. But I'm now back at the stage where I am starting to put this back together. So I will show you where I am with it. Uh, so usually this top would hinge up like so. Uh, and then it would stay up, oh, and it would stay in the upright position, and then you would play the records. Um, I've just 
To be able to take this apart, I've unscrewed the hinges at the back so that doesn't uh, hinge up properly anymore. But by the time I put the video together, obviously I can show you how all of that works. Uh, I also put some pictures up on screen of what this thing is supposed to look like when it's all assembled. And so in here we have the uh, record deck assembly, kind of the, uh, the the kind of business end of this thing, which is made by a company called Garrard, which are a well-known manufacturer of record decks, British company again. And uh, I'll just take this out. Very carefully. Just bear with me one second. Yeah. So this has obviously had a new power cable fitted at some point because that's not uh, 1960s. Uh, but anyway, so this is the Garrard uh, actual deck side of things. Um, apologies if my terminology isn't quite right. Like I say, this isn't my area of expertise. Uh, but this is a fully automatic um, system, and I did actually have this working, uh, even though there wasn't any actual. Why can I rest that? Let's rest that there. Any actual audio output from it. So you put uh, a record on top of this arm here, and uh, you can stack your records up on it, and it will actually drop them onto the turntable, and um, you know automatically play them and everything else, uh, which is quite cool. It's got this fully automatic mode. I don't fully understand how it works, but uh, I will. Uh, I will look into that. Um, on the back end of this, I've cleaned all of this up already. Um, this was quite filthy and disgusting. Uh, it's just lovely uh, mechanical linkages and, and metal and switches and relays and all kinds of stuff on the back here. So a really cool thing uh, to see working once I get it all back up and running again. So really looking forward to getting that working. Like I say, it was working, so hopefully not too much effort there. Um, I've already rewired the arm. So I'll just show you this part. So I'll just put a close up on screen of that, um, of what I've done to the head and the arm on this. Uh, basically what I've done is I've put a modern uh, cheap ceramic cartridge in it. Um, obviously uh, not high end audiophile grade stuff, but to be honest, this isn't a high end audiophile grade device. I mean, these things were, were sell, sold relatively cheaply back in the day, uh, you know, just a way for sort of teenagers to have their own record player in their bedroom and stuff. So I don't really want to go overboard with it and, and try to turn it into something that it was never really intended to be. Um, I just want it to work and, uh, you, you know, just have some fun playing some records on it. So I put the new cartridge in there. Um, I've, uh, I think that's quite a neat solution uh, to get that installed. And obviously I'll, I'll explain how all of that works uh, in the video. Uh, also rewired the arm, um, put a new wiring through to the amplifier in there, so that should all be good. Um, the other thing about these that's quite interesting uh, is the old, the old uh, crystal cartridges. Um, something called the tracking weight, which is uh, actually the force that the arm presses down on the record. Uh, and if you're a Tecmoan viewer, you've probably seen him uh, use a little set of scales to actually measure the tracking tracking weight on uh, some of his turntables. Um, on the older older cartridges, uh, it had to be much, much higher, so they would actually put a lot of force down on the record itself, and it caused a lot of wear and tear to records, and so these older players kind of have a bit of a reputation for destroying records. Um, and that's something that's gonna be fixed with the new cartridge, because obviously the tracking weight on the modern cartridges is much, much lighter, uh, but it's something that I need to measure and actually work out how to adjust. It is adjustable. Uh, it may be a case of changing the spring as well. So that's something I need to kind of learn about. The other thing is the output from these modern cartridges is much lower. Let me just pop this down and have a look in this box. So the output from these uh, modern cartridges is a much lower voltage uh, than it was from the original, uh, the original crystal cartridges. So you also need a preamp to bring it up to the right level to actually drive the old original valve amplifier. So this is a valve amplifier. Uh, the valve isn't in it at the moment. That's the valve made by a company called Mullard, uh, British made it says on it. And this was kind of the guts of the uh, record player's amplifier originally back in the 60s. Uh, so a mono valve amp that just feeds a four ohm speaker. Uh, you've got the two knobs on the front, the tone and the volume control. Uh, there's this interesting capacitor here, which is actually three capacitors in one. Uh, so I want to have a look at how that works. Um, that's pretty much completely dried out and knackered now, as you would expect from something that's, uh, you know, 50 years old. So uh, I'm going to replace that with modern capacitors. Of course, I'm going to, I'm going to keep hold of it because it is a very cool looking thing uh, but if it doesn't work it's, it's not very useful so yeah modern um, ceramic head 
uh, driving a preamp. This preamp's actually been modified. This is uh, this is kind of a, a hobbyist soldering kit uh, mono preamp that I bought. Um, but there's some modifications that needed to be made to it to actually uh, bring the output up to the right level to drive the valve amp. So uh, that will be something that I'll cover in the video. Um, yeah, just uh, how the valve amp works, um, voltages, cleaning stuff up, getting everything rewired, getting it all back up and running. So it's not going to be uh, an audio file grade device. Uh, it was never intended to be. Uh, it's just a bit of fun, but uh, I think an important piece of history and uh, something that I kind of want to, hopefully I'm, I'm kind of rebuilding in the original spirit uh, as it was intended. So I hope that was an interesting look into uh, kind of behind the scenes on something that I'm working on at the moment. Um, like I say, if you have any sort of feedback or input, or if you're an expert on these things, I, I genuinely appreciate it because it's not something that I, I know a huge amount about. Um, yeah, and uh, look forward to seeing this project hopefully at some point in the very near future. So I'm going to go and have another lem sip because my throat is uh, absolutely killing me and starting to uh, starting to <laughs> falter a bit now. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this interesting, and I'll hopefully see you over on Control Reese in the very near future.